Hello friends. Uh, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and today I'll be sharing few practical tips regarding uh, while performing posterior capsulotomy with a vitrector. This is an elderly lady who is having a hypermature cataract and we begin the surgery. The rexus has already been performed and the nucleus is being chopped into small quadrants and emulsified. the second heavy nucleus is being chopped care is taken that the emulsification is being done at a much more posterior plane at the level of the capsular axis this ensures that the the energy which is delivered is much more posterior and there is the effect of the turbulence and the fragments hitting the cone endothelium are minimized and hence the endothelial protection is maximized so once you've done that we can see uh, that the posterior capsule is thick and there is a calcified plaque there and unfortunately it's in the visual axis So at this moment I'm thinking how should I get rid of this It doesn't look the type like wherein I could just polish it or scrape it off It's quite thick and calcified and unfortunately it's in the visual axis and it is going to hamper the vision because of its location and its density I'm thinking whether to deal with this uh, posterior plaque now itself or do any yag later on I decide to do a primary posterior capsulotomy at the primary setting hoping for early visual rehabilitation because it is a calcified capsule i thought forceps might not be the best option so i resort uh, to doing this with my cutter so i'm trying to put in dispersive ovd i'm using oro coat just enough not to push the posterior capsule way back so that it's easier for me to see just enough and with the bevel down without any irrigation with the settings like aspiration first and then cutting i'm engaging the posterior capsule after a few cuts i can get a cleavage plane and then i rotate my uh, cutter and uh, make it bevel up now and i know what i'm cutting now i'm seeing what i am cutting and again start performing my uh, capsulotomy using the vitrector so the flow rate is extremely low here just uh, 10 cc and the vacuum is again 300 i am just trying to engage the the posterior capsule and make nibbles at it care has to be taken that we should not pull at this or tug at this margins because again they can extend uh, in an uncontrolled fashion these air bubbles are really you know frustrating they hamper the visualization the usual source is from the the ovd syringes again i get rid of the i am putting a little bit more of a ovd the entire process is done without using any uh, irrigation so i'm just trying to enlarge it my goal is to enlarge it to around 2 2 and 1/2 mm in the center of the visual axis and i'm hope that i'm at the center of the visual axis because in direct people it's quite difficult to predict so once i have achieved my desired size of the opening i think this should be enough i'm implanting uh, the foldable lens into the bag After gently nudging the lens into the bag, I need to remove the OVD which is gone behind the IOL. So I'm going to use my vitrector to remove it. An important point to note here is that the bottle height is at just 40 cm and this is a secret but we don't want sudden deepening of the chamber. a lot of fluid going into uh, the posterior chamber beyond the posterior capsular tear uh, that is the reason why we could maintain and prevent the anterior hyoid phase from rupturing uh, as is demonstrated by the lack of any vitreous prolapse 
uh, after using triamcillin acetate. So before I remove my irrigating handpiece, I'm hydrating the side port so that we don't have a shallowing of the entry chamber. Once both the side ports are hydrated, we can see a nice central opening, which I hope is at the center of the visual axis. Four hours later, well, we have a opening which is slightly eccentric, but will do the job. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.